An aspect of decentralization often overlooked is manufacturing in the physical world. There's a disconnect in people's minds between P2P network-based systems and the quote real, tangible world, but I think it's actually very important to bridge these. I believe being able to affordably create all sorts of high quality objects on an individual or community level will be crucial in a future with hyper automation. That's why I'm starting this new series called the Desktop Manufactory as a way to explore the people, machines and techniques for physically building this new world. I want to get stuck in and design the machines that can make useful functional objects and even other machines themselves. We can already see the very early stages of how physical objects are dematerialized and transferred as information and I hope this trend will continue. Many people aren't realizing the full potential of their machines and only create toys and other plastic trinkets but think the potential for complex useful object creation isn't far off. Just imagine a future where instead of buying a new smartphone you buy the blueprint source files and have a replicator type machine make a completely customizable one for you. That's obviously a long way off, but we're on the path towards that day. There are many areas where progress could be made by either increasing the machine's capabilities, shrinking down size and cost, or making them easier to operate. Creating a new range of machines and their software, pooling resources and open sourcing all of it, gives us a chance to innovate and progress together. Here are a few of the areas I've been thinking a lot about and want to cover. Obviously the first thing everyone thinks of is 3D printers. There's lots of room for innovation here, from increasing print quality, speed, output, to making completely out of the box solutions that require zero tinkering to operate. There are some people even working on ways to drastically increase build sizes or use conveyor belt build surfaces to access higher volume production lines. Resin printers are another area I'd love to see new ideas in too. There's definitely room for improvement here and potentially ways to automate more of the processes so it's less messy and more user friendly. Perhaps the basic tenets of 3D printing themselves can be challenged and rethought, allowing for completely new ways of doing things to emerge. Who knows? But either way, it's worth exploring. Along with the printers, there's also lots of room for new open hardware accessories that can do things like automatically finish prints to production level standards or devices to create precise custom filament or resin colours. 3D scanners are also an area to explore as a way to quickly digitise real life objects for later manufacturing and there are a range of open source options out there already. CNC mills have come a long way in the past few years but plug and play solutions are still quite expensive for what they are. Mills are still the go-to solution for creating high quality objects especially from wood or soft metals. One area that could be looked into is automated drill bit changes and stuff like that which could dramatically increase productivity and usefulness. More complex 5 axis mills are another area ripe for innovation and a great open hardware machine is needed. These would allow users to make very intricate things. High quality laser cutters are often massive expensive machines. How can we change this? They are widely used for many applications and it's something worth looking into. There are a few open source projects out there already and perhaps that's a good place to start. The injection molding process is fairly simple yet has large setup costs and massive machinery involved. What if we could shrink this down? Maybe combine with other CNC machines to create on demand metal molds. Imagine what desktop injection molding could bring to open hardware projects. Creators could make small to medium runs of high quality plastic parts in very little time and for much less cost. Another way to make simpler plastic parts quickly is with a vacuum former. You basically heat up a sheet of plastic then hold it down over an object using a vacuum while it cools and sets hard. It's often used in packaging design but it could be useful for other things too. There are some consumer products out there but making an open version could be worth doing. Printing is an area often overlooked due to its fairly mature ecosystem but I still think there are many areas to explore and innovate in. Large format printers for example are still quite expensive for what they are. Other 2D print methods could be looked into also like inkjet printing directly onto plastics, woods or metals or even creating new conductive inks for printing circuits. Screen printing and pad printing is yet another space that's widely used in many products and could be shrank down and automated further for the individual user. In a similar realm to 2D printing, personal automated bookbinding could be a very exciting technology to pursue. 
Imagine being able to use standardized A4 or A5 papers and cards to print, fold, cut and bind professional on-demand books, zines, leaflets, etc. HP already has their giant expensive machines for on-demand printing. What if we could do something in a similar vein at the personal user level? Another machine that deals with paper, amongst other flat materials, is the die cutter or plotter. These are used in a wide variety of applications from vinyl stickers and decals, cutting leather or heat transfers to stuff like finishing paper and cardboard with intricate detailing. These seem to be very similar mechanically to inkjet printers and I wonder how inexpensive you could create something like this. Creating PCBs at home is still a little hit or miss and often requires a lot of mess or chemicals and general faffing about. A small all-in-one system that can take designs and create professional quality boards in a short amount of time would be killer for inventors and tinkerers. There are a few all-in-one devices out there at the moment but I think there may be other ways to do things too. This area is definitely one that I'll be putting a significant amount of time into researching. I've got the feeling there's either new materials or new techniques that are waiting to be uncovered. Probably the granddaddy of them all is actual electronics component fabrication. Creating chips and other components at home may seem like a fanciful sci-fi dream, but there are actually people out there like Sam Zalouf and the Libra Silicon Project working on these problems and making progress. Maybe one of you watching this holds the key to unlock this technology and change the world. If you know of a great project in any of these areas, have worked in one in the past, or are currently working on something, I want to hear from you. Besides covering them in this series, I'd love to collaborate and start designing and building a new family of highly affordable open hardware machines that push boundaries and can create output on par with large expensive alternatives. I have some ideas for new things that I've never seen tried before and want to realise them. I especially want to hear from those who have made their own machines, industrial designers and software developers for creating the user interface side of things. I genuinely think we could help bring about a new decentralised industrial revolution where the power to create advanced machines and objects is within the reach of many people worldwide. We could create open systems that are easy enough for beginners to use and modular enough for advanced users to tinker with and expand. Email me mail at n-o-d-e.net and we can start organising little groups to work on various areas you're all interested in. Thanks for watching and I hope to hear from you.